on the line right now. Uh, it's even odd to say, uh, but it's a former teammate of mine, and let's say that's a very, very loosely say that because he is about a hundred times better of an athlete than I am and has terrific hair. Uh, his name is Mark Brunel, everyone. He's an analyst for ESPN now, but before that, he was one of the better quarterbacks around. Hey, Mark. Joel, thanks for having me on. Are you kidding? Thank you for stooping and coming on the show. No, hardly. My old teammate. How you been? Uh, it's nice that you say that. because Oh, uh, we were teammates, Joel. <laughs> uh, Mark used to, when he needed a stool, I would get on all fours. <laughs> That's not true. That makes <laughs> so me sound terrible. He could reach up. Uh, it's been a while since I've spoken to you. Yeah, uh, I think something years. Yeah, it's uh, we we had a feud for a long time. <laughs> Mark, did you ever think that a crappy walk on would ever be hosting an NFL show that you would be a guest on in your life? You know what? I, I never thought it could happen, but it certainly has. And uh, listen, Joel, I'm a big fan. I'm excited for your career and uh, what you've done, what you're doing. And uh, so that's cool. It's, it's great to uh, reconnect after all these years. God Bless you. Thank you. It, it, believe me, that Mark was one of the only people that would actually talk to me as a walk-on, uh, whereas all the other starters, they would look at you like you were filth. Uh, <laughs> well, you were uh, tied in. I, I relied on you to a degree. I mean, you were, well, you know. I relied. You, I made the defense look spectacular. Yes, you did. When yes, I played did. scout offense. Oh, look at that. Can you, you can't see the photo they just put up of me, but it looks like I was stung by a bee or a swarm of bees ah oh, that's horrifying <laughs> stop now mark being an analyst do you enjoy that or do you on sundays does your right arm tingle and you still want to get out there and play well you know i miss i miss the playing days uh i was fortunate to to be around the game as long as i was um I can tell you that my Monday mornings, uh, I feel a lot better getting oh. out of bed. Um, so I don't miss that physical side of it, of course. But, you know, Joel, and, and you can probably say the same thing. You know, you, you, you miss when you, when you step away from the game. You miss the guys. You miss the locker room and the clowning around. And, and uh, so I do miss that part. But, uh, you yes. know, being an analyst for ESPN, I get an opportunity to stay connected to the game. And, and uh, I don't get to play it, but I get to talk about it. And uh, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. Do you miss, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a constant fight in the locker room whether it was going to be rap music or country music? Yeah. I found that endlessly entertaining. You know, it, you know what's funny is that that doesn't change in the pros either. There's a, there's a battle for in the locker room of who gets to play what music. And, it's, and uh, no, that, I think, uh, you know, I'm a high school football coach. It, that uh, happens in our locker room too. I think it's just universal, goes with the game, whoever, yes. you know. If you're just joining us, we have the great Mark Brunel on the line, and I uh, we played, and I say played very. Uh, it's a very broad term. Uh, football together at the University of Washington. He is now uh, an analyst uh, for something called ESPN. I'm not sure what that is. Mark, do you feel like um, there's a competition between the NFL Network and ESPN, and do you think that you're winning? Uh, I don't think there's a competition, um, but if there was, yeah, we'd be winning. Do you, do you feel like uh, you get to talk about other sports uh, and that the, you can kind of lord that over them and they just have to stick to football? Yeah, they're, they're uh, uh, NFL Network, so it's a one-trick one pony. That's all they get, and, and uh, we're fortunate we could talk about all kinds of sports. and, and uh, yeah. So, yeah, we, right. I'd say we have the upper hand, Joel. All right, speaking of telling me something about sports, uh, do you like this Blake Bortles, and do you think he's coming along in Jacksonville? You know, he's coming along. I do like him. i uh, spent some time with him before the season, got to know him a little bit, saw him in training camp, and, you know, while it's not uh, – it's not pretty right now. Yeah, he's not taking care of the ball, which ultimately is the number one job of a quarterback. You know, make good decisions with the football. Don't give it to the other team. And, and that's what's happening, and that's one of the reasons why they're sitting at 1-8. and eight. Um, Yeah. But he's, he has great potential. Um, he's, a, he's a pocket passer who has some athletic ability. It's important to him, which is what I picked up, just getting to spend a little time with him. This, this game is important to him. He wants to be good. He wants to be the franchise quarterback in Jacksonville, you know, for, for a long time. And I think he can be. He's, he's shown a right. lot of promise. Um, now, what do you gotta, think What do you think Andy Dalton's doing today? Andy is, uh, he's not real pleased. But uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully, Joel, he's 
He's watching the film, learning from his, his mistakes, and just trying to forget about what happened last night as quickly as possible, which you just have to do. There's going to be bad games. Yeah. Have you ever had a game like that? Did you ever have a game oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. You know what? I, there's a few games that stick out. And, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, um, I had a five-pick uh, game one time against St. Louis. Um, that was tough. Uh, you, know, I've, you know, I've had multiple three-interception games. You know, I, I've uh, lost a couple AFC championship games. You know, there's games that I think of in my career that, that still sting. You know, big games that you, know, you want to play at your, your best and you want to win. And, and, uh, but, you know, sometimes you just don't get them, but you've got to learn from it and move on. Yeah. Do you ever, did you ever, like, scream into a pillow or rip a locker door off or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I, wouldn't have, I was never strong enough to rip a locker door off. But, uh, uh, yeah, everyone handles it their do you ever own talk way. To, yeah, uh, I, I certainly was frustrated. Do you ever talk to Billy Joe Hobart, the you man know, that brought I, down I the University talked, of Washington football program? Yeah, I probably talked to Billy maybe a couple years ago. Uh, it's been a while, but we, we somewhat stayed in touch over the years. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. I think he's a real estate agent now, right? He is, I think, up in the uh, P- Puyallup area, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I hear he just takes his commission in Corvettes and rifles. <laughs> That's what he bought with all the money he bought. Okay. Uh, no, now <laughs> I want to ask guns. you they about... They were rifles, Joel. They were handguns. Come on, get it right. Yo, you're right. Now, I want to ask you about an incident, the booger wiping incident on oh, you your... Had, you, just, you know, I, I knew this was coming, Joel. It's the booger wipe that was heard around the world, my friend. I know. It's... it's, it's we, I think we've got footage of it here that you can't see, but uh, maybe we don't. There is it there? No, we, never mind. So what, exa- what exactly happened? You know, I, I'm standing there. I mean, it was, it's really simple. I'm standing there next to Sanchez and uh, kind of an important game. Right. Um, AFC Championship game, if I'm not mistaken. We're playing the uh, Steelers. Um, mm-hmm. Is that right? It was that game, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah it doesn't really yep, matter. AFC but, Championship um, versus Steelers. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm standing there and uh, San- Sanchez is getting in his nose a little bit and looks at it and proceeds to just wipe it on my on my jacket. And that was it. And I was just I was shocked. I was in disbelief. That's... I think I turned to him and said, dude, did you just wipe a booger on me? Yeah. And he's, <laughs> he just said, yeah, sorry, brew. <laughs> brew. Oh, that's uh, that's I I I want to congratulate you on your restraint and not punching him. Oh, uh, you know what? If I punched him, I might have knocked him out, and then I would have had to have gone into that game. So probably was a uh, perfect scenario. Smart, no. smart on my on my part to. Uh, I don't think the game was going real well. So I, uh, yeah, I restrained. Uh, and, well, uh, Mark, I want to thank you dearly for coming on the show and making it interesting for four minutes. Because uh, I'm going to go back to mumbling and pretending I know things about NFL football. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.